Uh, and so our, our theme tonight, as you know, is the cloud. I'm excited to have uh, Rob Alexander crew come up and, and speak shortly. Uh, I've known Rob actually for 20-ish years, uh, so it's been quite a long time. He spent a lot of time at uh, Microsoft, uh, doing a lot of work with CIOs and high-level executives, uh, advising them into enterprise technologies. And he's now with the VMware, and he's uh, going to present with a little Canadian twist, I think, tonight uh, on the cloud. So uh, let's welcome Rob to his presentation. Thank you. So I'm Rob. Uh, as Jonathan pointed out, uh, I've been doing this for a little over 20 years. I spent 18 of those with Microsoft. Uh, and I'm a week into my job at VMware, where I am a partner manager managing Dell uh, and a cloud solution ar architect. What my real role is, is I'm teaching really on-prem data center engineers how to expand their thinking to include cloud. What does that mean in a cloud-enabled world? How do you get from here to there? Um, funny enough, I'm presenting IoT because IoT is one of the workloads that I firmly believe needs to straddle both public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. Uh, because you have uh, edge computing needs, you have remote access, you have geographic dispersion, you have data issues, you have security issues. And I'm gonna go over that in the few minutes I have. Uh, but I'm gonna start with, what is cloud and why is cloud? Because this is core to the uh, IoT really definition. Um, I wanted to also point out in my introduction that I of course forgot, the two words I really don't like are cloud and IoT. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's almost impossible to get away from them. Uh, and I wanted to have a slide on cloud because when I talk to my customers and they mention IoT or the Internet of Things or, or connected devices or anything like that, in their minds they're thinking cloud because the marketing has been so hard from Amazon, from Google, from Microsoft, from IBM, from everyone in the world saying, you need cloud, cloud is the solution to all your problems. It'll get you out of all your cost center woes and your upgrade cycles. But what is it really? I mean, really, it's just 15 years of data center evolution. It's, it's taking your traditional data center, hardware, compute network storage stack and putting it behind a layer of abstraction. So making it easier to make it disappear. Uh, easier to outsource, easier to move, easier to migrate. Really, it's anything that ends in AAS or as a service. So we have infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Uh, I have X as a service because it's whatever somebody wants to plug in at any given time of the day. If you can deliver it without people caring what the back end is, that's pretty much cloud. I wanted to make sure I get the point across that cloud doesn't have to be Amazon, Google, or um, Azure. Cloud can be anything that's abstracted. Cloud can be anywhere in the world. It could be any kind of limitation. It could be without any limitation. At its core, it has commoditized hardware underneath. So that instead of buying a specific server with a specific configuration for a specific workload, you're just gonna buy generic everything, you're gonna pool them together, and it's going to be doled out on a workload by workload basis as it's needed. You get 1,000 users at one minute, give them the compute power. You get one user the next minute, take that compute power back and give it to somebody else. So that is the essence of the cloud. How does that translate to the Internet of Things? What is it and why is it so hard? IoT is probably the number one thing that uh, the CIOs and the customers I meet with talk about constantly. They have data. They have lots and lots of data. For the last 30 years, they've been capturing it, they've been storing it, they've been putting it in the corner. They don't know what to do with it. And data on its own, Kind of useful. You can see what the temperature is at any given time of the day of the last 30 years inside your plant. You might get some more detail around what's happening in there. Really, data is great, but it's not so great without context or without layers. And so I break down IoT into three things. Data, context, layers. So, firstly, gather your data. That could be sensor data, it could be mobile data, it could be device data, it could be people data, it could be scheduling, it could be HR, it could be security, badge access, who's going in, who's going out. All of those things are data points that can be useful. 
What you then have to layer on top of them is context. So I have a very simple diagram. Imagine this is a plant, could be an office, could be your house. There are a lot of things going on. There are access points, there are sensors, there's data points, could be your thermostat, could be your bandwidth, could be your television getting updates, could be your server in the basement getting updates, could be your family coming in the front door that they've just opened with a Bluetooth lock. All of these things are data, and when you put them together in a recognizable format, then you have context. So that if I see that I have a data point on the top left there that, say maybe it's gone offline, okay, it was there, now it's not there. What am I gonna do about it? Well, I just see that somebody went into that room. I just see that maybe they plugged something in and they blew a fuse. Now I know why that thing is offline and I know how to address it. That's what the context gives you. I have customers that come and say, I'm gonna put 30,000 temperature sensors in my plant and it's gonna tell me exactly how to run my plant more efficiently. Okay, how are you gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna put in the sensors in my plant, and I'm gonna connect them to my wireless network, and I'm gonna gather all that data point. Okay, then what? Then I'll know, because I'll see. You know, I have electricity coming in, I'm using electricity, I have product going out. That's one data point. What else are you gonna do with it? Uh, how about we get, break it down to a machine by machine basis? How about we see if there's shift changes when doors open and close and the temperature comes down or the temperature goes up? How about you cross-reference that with weather data? Is it hot outside? Is it cold outside? Is that affecting your, your production data? How about you see that your shift changes are slower when it's cold outside because people have coats and boots to take on or off? That's all giving you context. And then you add in the layers on top of that. Then you have time, then you have um, outside analysis, then you have visualization, and you can get over this hump of what is IoT and how can I deliver it. So when I have customers say, I want IoT, I take it back and we start building it. I'm building it and building it. And lastly, the speed bumps in delivering IoT. So uh, I have a lot of customers that you know, just want to go ahead, they put in the sensors, they connect them, and they do something like, uh, haven't thought about how they're going to provision them, or how they're going to manage them, or how they're going to give them access to writing their data to a central repository. Uh, and so, to get around that simple problem, they provision a single service account, and they give every sensor in the, in the plant the same service account ID and the same role. So now you have one point of access to every sensor and device in your plant, that if it's uh, compromised, you have a problem. So, security is the first thing you have to look at before you even go down this implementation route. Considering the roles of what is a sensor, what is a data point, what is a mobile device, what is a managed device, how are you gonna configure your firewalls? Because at some point, all that data gathering is gonna have to go somewhere. And this is one of the uniquely Canadian things in that most, if you go to a reference architecture for Google Cloud, a reference architecture for AWS, and they have an IoT, it'll say, connect, uh, create a service account per device, connect that device directly to the Amazon Cloud, and have it communicate in an encrypted method. Great. What if you have contracts that say you can't move things on a public network? What if you have contracts that say you can't move uh, sensor data or plant data onto a public network? Uh, I have nuclear customers that can actually connect their sensors to a network. So once a month they have to go around and gather up all that sensor data on a USB, walk it outside of the plant, then plug it in and deliver it to that outside network. And then we have sovereignty. How do I keep that data in the country? How do I plan ahead to deliver that hybrid cloud experience? Because uh, I have data segregation where I have data that has to stay in the country. I may have to keep it in the building. Uh, maybe there's some anonymized data that I can then deliver to a private cloud anywhere in the world, but I have to understand that. That leads into comp compliance, so data compliance, personal information. If you do overlay that sensor data with HR data and security data, who's coming in and out of your plant or into and out of your house, what are they doing? Suddenly you have to conform to GDPR. So the EU general data protection uh, recommendations show that at any time, if one of my employees were to leave my company, they have the right to call up the company and say, I want all my, my sensor data scrubbed. I want it removed from the system completely. And you have to do that. You have to be able to go in and say, Rob is no longer with the company and he wants his 
everything removed or anonymized at least from his time here. So that gets into retention. Uh, when do I have to get rid of things? How long can I keep it? Uh, access to that content, so that if I am keeping that HR data and the security data in a central repository, who can see it? Uh, because it might be great for production data, but suddenly I can see when Rob went in and out of the building. How many times Rob left the building? How many times was he on the floor? How many minutes was he on the floor? You can extrapolate a lot of things you didn't originally think you were going to need uh, getting into privacy issues. And then lastly, we have the always fun architecture limitations of if you suddenly have 30,000 sensors delivering content every 10 seconds, that's going to suddenly use up a lot of bandwidth between your plant and your central repository or your public repository. Uh, you may have latency issues that if, say, a temperature changes enough, say, a freezer sensor, if it goes above zero, you need to deal with that freezer immediately. If there's a, a long latency, such as maybe I'm only delivering that sensor data every hour, that's going to be a problem for me. I can't react to that emergency event. So I have to have timing for different sensors and different priorities. I have to deal with growth. How am I going to manage these 30,000 sensors when they go um, expanding beyond a single plant to multi-plants across the country? And then the interpretation of that data. Gathering it is great. Putting context on it is even better. Knowing the layers you're using is awesome. But what do you really want to learn from that data? If you're doing it just to see what pops up, it's going to have limited value. If you go in with your eyes open, knowing that if I do this, I think I might have some insights about this one specific scenario. That is the best possible solution for IoT. And then you can take it to step two from there. Thank you.